Hi everyone, um, we are starting our Instagram live interview with Aurora Molina and Edison Peña Fiel to discuss um, El Raf de Madinusa, which we actually have right behind us over here. Um, so we're just going to wait for everything to load for Edison to join and then we'll get started with the questions. Okay, here we go. I see a lot of people are joining. Thank you guys so much. Hola. Hi, how's it going, Edison? So, okay, go ahead and get started with the questions as soon as possible. I just want to remind everyone who else who, who's listening that um, feel free to add any questions on the bottom, and I'll go over. Prepared. Okay. Awesome. Super cool. Um, so the first thing I wanted to touch upon was kind of the significance of the piece and and the inspiration that you guys drove from just kind of to inform everyone what the piece is about before we go into details. So do you guys want to just each give your perspective on like how you got about making the piece and, and um, what the inspiration came from? Aurora, let's start. Go, you start. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, well, um, I guess it has to do with the way Aurora and I uh, approach our works individually. I know Aurora's concepts uh, develop from a specific themes and reference uh, specific events. And on the other hand, I develop my work um, based on a specific events, but going into a, a more general idea uh, in, in a way of um, going globally with, with these subjects. And, um, and then basically finding the common denominator uh, so the works become global or general rather than local and specific. But I think working with, with Aurora and merging both of our, our works, it situates the piece in, in a local context and expand it to be global as well. Definitely. Aurora, would you like to add to that? Very well said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so when I got the call from um, Melanie from the gallery that we were going to have those space, um, I wanted to do something that was immersive and sort of like canceled out the fact that it was a hotel room. So I had collaborated with um, Eddie before um, and uh, create this immersive experience. So I called him immediately. Um, and then we started to think about of ways um, still within the realm of um, immigration and uh, the work that we had done previously, how we could fit that into the context of which the experience was going to happen. So I told him um, that it was going to be facing the beach, um, that the water was a landscape. Um, and then we started to brainstorm from there and finding different historical references, uh, which, you know, we both do in our work and in our practice. Um, and then I had mentioned, I think you went online, Eddie. And you mentioned this series of uh, the Valceros um, that I had done years before, um, and it was in a gallery setting. So I thought it was perfect to go from there. Um, and then we started to think about the title and the play with words. And that's when we um, started to think about the, 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 the piece, the raft of the medusas, and, and started to think about how that in the context of Miami and um, the fluxes of immigration, not only from um, the Gulf of Mexico or where the water is it's facing, but also um, in that global um, context. Context, exactly. Yeah. Definitely. And I think that's kind of something to touch upon as well. Um, by showing this work and having people visit, I found that not only does it really speak to the people that are locally from here and the people that are already very well versed with the reality of Barceros and what Barceros are and, and how they came to the U.S. and so on. But there's also a lot of people that had no idea what it was about, but understood almost like physically they understood what it was about and what themes that this piece was touching on in a grander, broader context. Uh, 
Aurora, you did mention the kind of play on words with regards to the title of the piece. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what the significance of the play on words is. And, and at what point in time in the creation of this piece did this, did that element of it come into play? Was it from the get-go that you guys wanted to incorporate this Rafta Medusa piece from before? Or is that something that was added as an extra layer afterwards? Um, I, I think, Eddie, we start, it's very hard to collaborate. Um, sometimes, you know, you have like the clash of the egos coming through. Um, and I always look for ways where, if, you know, it worked the first time, you might take a second chance. <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> use that infrastructure that was created and, and work with a person that you really enjoyed. And this was what happened. I called Eddie. It's like, you know, the same way we had coll collaborated before that he had an opportunity. Now I had the opportunity and it's like, okay, so what, what do we do? And um, you mentioned the fact that these sort of like Anglicisms happen in Latin America where people adopt um, the names of the son of the vowels of, of certain names and those become names. Um, and then we started to laugh about it. Um, and then this idea of um, contextualizing the piece um, started so we sort of like follow with it and we we went back and forth with um a couple of um thoughts for the title whether it was going to start with um an article in spanish or english or like how the reference was going to be captured by someone and it was very organic um so yeah, definitely. And um, and most of the work that I do has uh, to do with this play of words. I'm, I'm always playing with this uh, double meaning and in this case, just um, Latinizing this uh, medu me the Medusa to Madeinusa. And yeah, just, just like a play of words, but also with this other meaning about um, commerce and globalization and the made in USA that doesn't exist as much as before and and the idea of the American dream and and all of of that of those ideas of 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 commerce or of uh, opportunities what is made uh, in the USA and and also the the work of Aurora of the Balseros and and these uh big heads that uh, were involved in in this um in this work has has to do with uh, the idea of, of dreams and and uh, what could be rich. Definitely. Um, one thing that I'd like to touch on as well is kind of like, you know, so in this piece, we're talking about the American dream, like you mentioned, we're talking about immigration to the US for added opportunity, we're talking about leaving your native country because of the desperation that you feel within that country. Can you guys talk about, even though you may not have literal exact experiences like this, can you talk about how your lived experiences as immigrants in the US relate to your artistic production of this piece and, and, and how you guys empathize with it? Well, um, the way that I approach this work, uh, well, I'm an immigrant, I come from Ecuador, uh, I stayed here overstayed my visa and had to work illegally for a while um, without documents and yeah I didn't cross the the border but I met people that did and all those experiences uh, coming from the personal and then the collective experience you just uh, well you start just collecting those those stories and and I see them transforming visually and in as I was saying before, the, the work of Aurora, um, it comes from, from a specific point, like the Balseros or the children of migration. Uh, but I try to think more in general. I, I'm, I don't like to focus on, on, on the specifics, but uh, how this, uh, the same story of the Balseros, people crossing the ocean from one piece of land to the other, that, that's repeating all over again. Like, People from Haiti coming to the U.S. or Africa or, or Middle East coming uh, going to Europe. So there's there's that uh, part of uh, history repeating over and over again, and 
And that's one of the things also that I use in, in my work, video is, is a time-based media. And um, the idea of this time-based media being on a loop, uh, to me, uh, transform uh, or has that idea of, of the history repeating it itself or a constant moment that never ends. So, so that's uh, how I approach the, the work and try to create that, that tension for the viewer. Thank you. Aurora, do you have anything to add to that as well? I, I think like for this specific installation, I just, I wanted to do a piece, although I don't touch upon, you know, the, the, the subject of being Cuban in Miami too much in my work. Um, I've always wanted or had that desire of contextualizing that piece and the place that it could happen, mm -hmm. you know, sort of like, it's not the same to, to place these, you know, in Wingwood than having it here. So I think it was a great opportunity to think about migration closer to the water. And that was what, you know, the piece was born so, so quickly. I think we, we came to see the space on a Thursday and by Friday morning we had everything. And we had like different ideas of, of the approach, but I think for a specific, um, outside specific installation uh when you see the space when you're in the space uh how people enter the sound how low is the roof it gives you a lot of um you know it determines a lot of the piece at the moment you see that and you see the potential of it so the first thing we thought about it's like okay we have to cancel out the room um and um, how we're gonna do that. And then we thought about, you know, the same sort of like warmness of, of, of the fabric, the drapes, that, that the ocean, like the waves. And then we started to create even second layers to the piece that when we saw how effective the video translated into that, we thought we needed less and it transformed again. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I think the approach for these kind of installations uh, are to, to be experienced, not only the, the take on the artist, but also the people that come and interact with it and how, you know, having almost the sound of the, of the, of the beach there could affect coming here to, to experience the piece, so. Definitely. But it was also very interesting to recontextualize the bits and pieces that we have from other <laughs> pieces and installations. It's like uh, the, all the drapes are from the Persistent Caravan. Uh, part of the video is from my landscape series. And Aurora, she has to work. Also, the, 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 the raft is made out of some um, crates from another piece called Nyakinia Ya. So all of these elements have to do with migration as well. It's just creating a new composition with them. It's almost like a Frankenstein piece, like a, a, a work that becomes a sum that's greater than its different parts. I love that. I think that's super cool. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about the process. I know you guys have talked at length already, but um, how your experience was collaborating with one another. I know you guys talked about having collaborated before, which is kind of what led to this collaboration. Um, how was your experience and, and how do you think it uh, bolsters your own work um, to be able to interact with something that's so vastly different? Aurora? <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's, you know, as I told you before, um, collaborating is very difficult because um, we have our own practices, which are very different, than, yet thematically with the same approach, the same interest. Um, but it's how do you make um, a work that doesn't overpowers the other and um, informs each other. Definitely. So... Um, you know, when we were installing, we created the ambience first, try the video, then started to place the sculptures, um, sort of like mimicking the same gestures as the original painting that we were, um, you know, dragging some um, historical context from. 
and it's like okay Eddie I think it's canceling out the video part that needs to be there turn it over so it's it's almost like understanding how the piece stops being individually thought and they become intertwined again and how that dialogue starts to happen so you have to cancel out that you're the artist that created that piece and that piece needs to stand out from the other piece it has to be a marriage um and of course it's you know it's hard because most of the time artists comes with their egos so it's not only working with um the work that you produce but working with a with a person that might want to over power the other's work and that's not true collaboration so at least um you know that's that has been the approach and it just you know i i think this opportunity happened because uh the other collaboration on which Eddie approached me it just came so naturally uh and i enjoy that um so this was like a you know another opportunity to sort of like create the same um equation uh and it was very timely because we had um uh, been deinstalling the old one and we sort of like grab everything and put it here and um you know created like a whole different narrative um, so yeah i agree with what aurora said um and then launches on me which helps you know <laughs> Yeah, well to for me it was um it's it's not that I work in video, but I use video as my work. I, especially the last four years I'm, I'm I started talking about history and I needed a time-based medium to to talk about history and, and the repetition of these situations over and over again in different parts of the world. So that's why I, I I'm focusing on video, but I have done work in photography. My latest project was a paint uh, painting series. Um, so using the the medium or or in this case um, the elements that we have that already had a, a symbolism attached to it. Uh, so it was a way just of composing um, whatever we needed to. To compose for the space, and um, making sure that that it delivers the message and and adds to to the message, or if it's not working, like the extra layer of of uh, fabric, <laughs> then it, it needed to be removed. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely say what I'm hearing from the both of you is kind of like that you guys both came in with your unique mediums, but that the marriage of those two things allowed the piece to take on an entity of its own and that both of you were able to work in service of the piece rather than in service of your own artistic mm -hmm. expressions which i totally see in this piece i think everyone totally sees in this piece kind of the way that the two things together totally creates a setting it it, it recalls a certain historical entity in mind and also refers to a grander subject in general Kind of mm -hmm. the last question that I want to touch upon before we wrap up, we're almost uh, done with everything, um, is kind of talking about the American dream like you'd mentioned, Edison, and how this piece interacts with the concept of an American dream and how it kind of confronts that with the realities of people that aren't so dreamlike, so to speak. Yeah, well, the way that I approach this this idea of the American dream, at least with the Made in USA, the Made in USA uh, um, name, I guess uh, it has to do with globalization, social media, the international news media, and this whole idea that we have of the American dream, that um, things are being uncovered and presenting how hard and difficult it is to get here or be here, at least in, in the U.S., so I think with this piece, uh, I'm, well, at least from my part, <laughs> is trying to tap on, on those uh, points. And the title of the, the work um, is referencing this, this painting, The Raft of the Medusa, but instead of Medusa, you get Madeinusa, and it's not even made in USA. And this idea of the expectation and kind of... Um, place with this idea of, of migrating, like uh, what you're expecting when you get to the USA is not what you really get. Very cool. So All right. it, it 
to me, it reads like a mirage, like an, o an oasis, something that, that you think is there, but, it, but it's not. Excellent. So that wraps up our Instagram live interview for the day. Do you guys want to both just share real quick um, where people can reach you on social media to see more of your work? And then um, we'll say goodbye to everybody. Uh, Eddie Penafiel on Instagram and that's um, edisonpenafiel.com. You can reach me there. Thank you for tuning in. How about you, Aurora? Um, through the Camp Gallery. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> Camp Gallery. Uh, yeah, definitely stay tuned. Um, I, think, I think, Eddie, more collaborations are going to come through. Huh? Yeah. I'll buy lunch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be so excited to see them. All right. Well, goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in and um, have an excellent rest of your day. Bye.